So far, I'm really happy with our progress. We've taken all of the complexity out of our imperative shell, our view integration layer, and we've moved it all into a very simple immutable make move function, which is very easy to test and as we'll see soon see, very easy to reuse. What I'm not happy about is undo and redo. These are still coupled to our imperative shell using our view reactivity system. And if we head over to our spec file, you can see I haven't even got a test for undo and redo. So this could be completely broken and we wouldn't know. What I'm not going to do is write a test for this right now. Instead, we're going to focus on the concepts of functional core imperative shell. And we're going to extract this logic into simple uh, plain JavaScript functions that are not using views reactivity system. So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to use test driven development for this and we're going to start off with the undo function. There's going to be two scenarios we need to consider. The first move when you can't undo and the second move when you can undo. So I'm going to say it is the first move and this is going to be the scenario where you cannot undo the game state. So I'm just going to say const actual is equal to undo and it's going to be the very first move which is going to be uh, the move count of zero. And in that case, we're going to expect it not to have changed. So I'm going to expect that actual is going to still be equal to zero even after we call undo. Let's go ahead, save it off and watch it fail because we haven't even imported undo. Before we do that, I'm going to write the second test. So we're going to say it is not the first move. For example, the second move, and that's going to actually allow us to undo it. Let's go ahead and define this function and make everything work. The first thing I'm going to need to do is import undo, which I haven't even defined yet. Let's go ahead and define that now. I'm going to export a new function called undo, which is going to take the move count as the first argument. We've already actually implemented this, so what I'm going to do is jump down here and copy and paste it up here. One thing we can observe here is we're going to be deleting the value variable here, or the value property. This is part of Vue's reactivity system, and since we're refactoring away from that style and making everything nice and separate, value is going to go away, which is exactly what we expected. What we want to do is see if the current move, in this case I've called it count, is equal to zero, and if it is, we're going to return zero. We're not going to change the current move. Otherwise, we are going to return count minus one, which is going to be the new previous move. Let's save it off and see what happens. And everything is passing. This is extremely simple to read. There's no mutation, no global variables, and we know exactly what is happening here. Of course, we haven't actually wrapped this and integrated it to our view app yet. We're going to do that in the next lecture, but before we do that, we're actually going to focus on refactoring redo to make it work in the same functional way by not having any mutation. And we're going to see how that's a little bit different to the undo implementation.